December 1941. Ben Kuroki is 24 years old, and he and his brother Fred are farmers in western Nebraska. Their parents had emigrated from Japan in the early 1900s and selected Nebraska's Platte River Valley as the place where they would realize the American dream. It was tough work from sunrise to sunset, seven days a week. December 7, 1941, a date that will live in infamy, changed the life of Ben Kuroki. Shosuke, Sam Kuroki, told his sons, America is your country. Volunteer for army service to prove your loyalty. With the country now at war, the Kurokis were determined to do their part. When the local army recruiting station delayed their induction due to confusion over its policy towards Japanese Americans, Ben and Fred decided to travel 150 miles to an Air Corps station that was willing to accept them, making them two of the first Japanese Americans to enlist in the military following the outbreak of war. Ben and Fred were sent to Shepherd Field in Texas for recruit training. In two weeks' time, Fred was kicked out of the Air Corps and transferred to a trench digging outfit. Ben was assigned consecutive days and nights doing KP. Ben said, I knew I was getting the shaft, but dared not complain. For one year, Ben said, he walked on eggshells, fearing one wrong move or one questionable incident, right or wrong, would jeopardize his chances to prove his loyalty. Ben was by himself, fighting like hell for the right to fight for his own country. Ben's first mission came on December 13, 1942, as a gunner in a B-24. He later recalled, that first encounter with Flack was terrifying, but strangely, I experienced peace. For the first time, I belonged. Thereafter, we fought together as family. Nobody questioned my nationality. Life expectancy of a B-24 crew member was 10 missions. Ben's 24th mission was the bombing of Hitler's gas station, the Ploesti Romania oil refineries. Low-level Ploesti became the most decorated battle per capita in American military history. Five medals of honor were awarded. The Army said Ben could go home after 25 missions. Ben wanted to continue to prove his loyalty and volunteered for five more missions. After his 30th mission, the Army ordered Ben back to the States, sending him to the internment camps places where American citizens of Japanese descent were held behind barbed wire simply because of their national origin. Ben was ordered to convince the young men at the camps to volunteer for army duty in the fledgling 442 Infantry Regiment. Ben was uncomfortable and embarrassed. He said, I feel remorse because I probably influenced some to enlist and they paid the supreme sacrifice. Those internees from the camps went to war under the most adverse conditions of American history and became the most decorated unit of the war. Ben was in Denver, Colorado in full dress uniform and tried to catch a taxi. But when Ben opened the door, the civilian in the back seat slammed the door on him saying, I won't ride with no lousy Jap. Ben had to fight for the right to fight for his own country. But after 30 missions, he felt that was not enough to prove his loyalty to the United States. He wanted to battle Japan, but Army regulations prohibited any Japanese American from flying in combat over Japan. With help, Ben was given a special exception by Secretary of War Henry Stimson. Ben could continue to fight for his own country to prove his loyalty. From Tinian, Ben's B-29, named Honorable Sad Saki, flew 28 missions over the land where his grandparents, uncles, aunts, and cousins called home. His most memorable mission was when some 200 B-29s hit Tokyo with incendiary bombs. Ben was a tail gunner, and after they left the target, he said the sky was blood red for an hour. 80,000 Japanese were killed that night. Needless to say, he had qualms for the women and children trapped in the Holocaust, but he was an American fighting to defend his country. He survived 58 missions without a scratch, but still wanted to fight. So post-war, he embarked on his 59th mission, his single-handed battle against bigotry and prejudice. He'd speak anywhere people would listen. In New York City, Generals George C. Marshall, Jonathan Wainwright, and Claire Chenault were speaking to the annual forum hosted by the New York Herald Tribune. Guess who was seated between Wainwright and Marshall? Tech Sergeant Ben Kuroki. <laughs> 